So we're just waiting a bit for the attendance to join. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone, uh, wherever you're coming in from today. Uh, we're excited to present to you today, uh, well, Joe um, is, for the Apache Flink uh, 1.5. Um, as of from Viverica, um, Joe, I'll just hand over to you to um, kick off and take us through the new release. Cool. Thanks, Kay. Welcome, everyone, to this webinar. Uh, happy for everyone uh, who was able to join. Uh, also, welcome to the people over on, on YouTube. Uh, today, we will look a little bit in depth into the uh, features of the upcoming ongoing 1.15 release. My name is Joe Moser, or Johannes Moser, uh, as Germans will call me. I'm head of engineering uh, at Viverica, but I was also acting as a release manager for uh, the 1.15 and also 1.14 release. Good. So, um, yeah, we at Viverica, we are the, uh, known as the original creators of Apache Flink. We focus on enterprise stream processing um, with Viverica platform. That's a commercial product. And we are a subsidiary of the Alibaba group. So Flink 1.15, uh, what's the state? I was also using uh, these slides in the uh, meetup that we had a couple of weeks ago. So unfortunately, it is still ongoing. Uh, some blockers keep popping up. The good thing is that uh, we are finding them right now before we go stable. The bad thing is it's taking a bit longer uh, before announcing it's stable. Um, in the meantime, uh, release candidate three is out or should be out now-ish. Um, yeah, so you can have uh, a look at it, um, give it a try, provide feedback on the mailing list. I hope that you don't find uh, any more blockers so that we can finally publish it uh, and announce it as GA later this week. Um, yeah, I, I just put in the list of everyone who contributed to Apache Flink. It also shows the great community that we have. So many people from different companies uh, working on that. So it's not only uh, us here at Viverica or at the Alibaba group. It's also way more people who are contributing and making Apache Flink what it is. Good. So having a look at the release highlights, I was also using um, those slides uh, in the meetup. So I will... Uh, we will uh, have a rather quick look at this and then go in depth there. So in this webinar, whereas uh, the meetup was more intended for a Q&A, providing an, uh, a general overview, uh, this is picking some of the features and uh, uh, doing short demos on them, uh, uh, looking, uh, having a, li a little bit of a deeper look uh, at those. And so everything I do here uh, are live demos. Uh, yeah, for sure, they're all prepared. Um, um, but yeah, as you are probably uh, well aware uh, of, is that uh, some things uh, might uh, have the demo effect and but let's see I'm quite quite optimistic and positive that things will work out uh, as they should but uh, let's first have another look at the release highlights so we have been focusing a lot on the ease of operations 
Um, Apache Flink, uh, yeah, it's a great technology that serves a lot of use cases, uh, but things could in some parts uh, have a little bit less edges. So we have been focusing on that. Uh, checkpoints uh, versus safe point semantics. Uh, uh, that was something where a lot of questions uh, constantly pop up um, around checkpoints, application mode improvements, uh, reactive mode, adaptive scheduler, the adaptive batch uh, job scheduler, um, watermark alignment across sources, SQL version upgrades. Um, then when it comes to unifying stream and batch processing, so that's also one of the, the biggest stories that we have, uh, checkpoint handling for bounded and uh, mixed jobs, uh, window uh, table functions um, are now also available for uh, batch processing. There are also some other enhancements uh, around them. Um, in Flink SQL, um, we did a, a huge overhaul around casting, uh, and uh, types um, moving Apache Flink closer to the standard. One of the long awaited features uh, in the JSON functions, we will also have a look in that. Uh, and then we also focused on the connectivity extensibility. So we really want to embrace writing connectors, working on the connectors, improving them. Uh, a lot of time has been invested there. We will continue doing that. And I will provide a little bit of an overview what has happened there, what will happen there. And uh, if you want to start working on something like that, how this will look and uh, how will this work going forward? Good. Um, yeah. What else do we have? So uh, on the agenda, uh, to get my, my warm up, my, my fingers a little bit, we will first have a look uh, on uh, the open API that we're now offering, um, which hopefully will pr provide a lot of uh, opportunities uh, for people who want to, to automate stuff. We will have a close look on safe points versus checkpoints and see how that all works out. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> I was causing uh, one of the of the uh, RCs uh, being required because um, well, while while building the demo, I, I found another bug, so I, I can't demo everything that I uh, wanted to. But still, we will see how it turns out. Um, then we will have a look at the uh, Flink SQL uh, JSON uh, functions, the uh, Flink SQL table valued functions, uh, a bit around the adaptive batch scheduler, uh, connectors, the elastic search connector, and a general outlook on what will happen uh, soon. In the announcement of the webinar, it was promised that we will also go a bit into SQL upgrades but we will publish a dedicated documentation around this soon. So um, yeah, it was uh, uh, the, a bit too much uh, of content for, uh, for the demo. And um, yeah, so we are currently working on, on providing documentation and we will publish that soon. Good. Um, so with 1.15, um, we will now uh, offer uh, open API uh, um, specification or uh, 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 open documents that you can use uh, when you're using open API uh, uh, compatible tools. So that's a uh, um, definition that was somehow pushed by Swagger and now uh, became like it's its own thing. It's mean, uh, meanwhile in the version three, and there are um, yeah, it's it's uh, uh, different different file formats that can be used, and it's essentially providing uh, uh, a standard for REST APIs. So uh, we have now essentially we took our uh, the Flink API and. Um, yeah, published a document that you can use in tool that work with this. And um, yeah, so let's let's look into that. Uh, what is behind the open API? So there are a lot of tools where you have like auto generators, converters, validators, parsers, mock servers. Um, you can use it to test uh, all this stuff. So there's uh, a lot of useful things when you want to automate stuff. 
and uh, this is essentially reading a specification file and uh, then uh, providing out the completion uh, inspection whatnot. So um, when you go to our REST API document, uh, uh, documentation, um, then you can see now below the job manager, this open API uh, specification part. Um, and when you click here, uh, then you will find a YAML file. And this is essentially auto-generated file. Um, so it is guaranteed that it will stay up to date um, as Flink and the Flink uh, REST API uh, um, uh, develops over the years. And this can then be used, for example, if you have this, uh, uh, if you download Swagger, and um, yeah, lo load the file in there, uh, then you can essentially see, uh, inspect the whole, um, the whole API uh, This is available. So it provides uh, documentation. Um, yeah, that, that's just an example tool that you can use. Um, you see like, uh, yeah, uh, samples of values, uh, how does the, uh, the schema look? So there is also uh, uh, further below it's uh, a list of all the schemas. So that's something that comes with Swagger. For sure, there are also other tools that you can use. And so the whole, um, yeah, the whole Flink uh, REST API um, can be inspected by using such tools or uh, automated uh, by uh, using things that are, are, are following the open API standard. So this also shows like how we want to make things easier uh, for people, um, uh, for DevOps uh, and so on um, to, to automate stuff and um, just make uh, maintaining and running a Flink cluster um, easy. Good. Um, so uh, next, I want to have a look at uh, save points uh, versus checkpoints. So uh, what I have here is a running uh, Flink cluster. Um, you can see that uh, here I already got uh, uh, finished job here, so there are no more running jobs. And um, yeah, when save points versus checkpoints, what was introduced in um, in one point fifteen. Um, one of the essential things is that we clarified the, the uh, checkpoint semantics. So we updated the documentation. It is now clear what works, what not. Uh, it has been introduced uh, that we are able to do uh, canonical and native uh, save points. So um, uh, canonical save points are using this canonical format, which guarantees uh, that uh, uh, it can be translated to any snapshot format. And the native save points is using uh, essentially the format of the of the snapshots. So when you uh, have exampled, uh, ex uh, for example, uh, use RocksDB, then uh, native save points will use uh, the RocksDB format. When you use the RocksDB format, um, then it's also possible to do incremental uh, save points, uh, which will make them much faster uh, because uh, yeah, it does not need to transform into a canonical format and it also does not need to um, yeah, take a whole save point again. Um, we got that. That's also where we got uh, currently got the bug around that. Uh, so I won't go uh, into that. Um, but uh, something that we have also used, it will uh, added was the restore mode. So when it comes to the restore mode, you essentially have uh, uh, a save point um, that you want to to restore a job from, and you can do uh, do that now using uh, or uh, with, with two options. So you either have like the no claim uh, mode. So um, yeah, Flink uh, will not take over the ownership. So you got your save point and a Flink will not touch your save point. But uh, when you 
use the claim mode, then Flink says, well, okay, I'm going to take over ownership. And uh, at one point, it will even delete uh, the save points that you took uh, when it uh, does not need them uh, anymore. So how does that uh, look in real life? Um, so if we uh, want to run a job, um, I'm just using one of the examples, the top speed windowing uh, that is uh, shipped with this uh, uh, link. So uh, if we take a look at um, the Flink UI, so we can see that here we got a running job here. Um, what do we want to do now? Um, we now want uh, to take a save point. And um, at first, um, yeah, uh, let's take one where we say that Flink uh, will claim it. So I'm doing that here. Um, yeah, just uh, uh, stopping with a save point. Um, I, I'll say, uh, um, yeah, that we want to put, uh, to store it into the save point path. So save point completed. This was uh, stored into my folder. I'm going to copy over the path. Uh, you, we can see that the, the job um, yeah is now also finished. Uh, if we when we have a uh, uh, a look now at the directory, we will see that uh, this save point directory uh, now got uh, the save point in there, um, like it was said. And then if I uh, use that and uh, start the job again, based on the save point, um, using the, the restore mode uh, claim, the stop uh, the chop uh, starts again. Uh, we get it back up uh, running. Um, when I look at the directory by then, the save point uh, is still there. And then I'm gonna uh, stop the chop, copy over the chop ID. And we just, uh, I also took another save point, but this time to another directory. And then we have, when we have another look at the uh, claim, you see that this is empty. When we do the same thing with, um, start the, I'm gonna start the job again. Uh, this time I will store it to um, another folder just for the sake of, uh, making it more transparent. Uh, we'll add the job ID here. Now we're creating another canonical save point. So um, with uh, by providing um, a type here, type native or type canonical, which is also the default, but if you provide type, type native, you could take a, a native a snapshot. And if you would use the uh, RocksDB uh, state backend, then it would be an incremental one. This, this does not work right now. There's currently a fix uh, going into 1.15. And once this is done, we can hopefully release it. Um, good. So I took the canonical save point into the this no claim folder. Uh, let's have a look what is in there. Um, oh, oh, I took it into the wrong one. Yeah, let's have a look in the set. Save points, uh, final claim. So we got this one in here. I'm gonna restore uh, from the path that was provided here. Uh, so you can see that I, I just took the wrong, uh, the wrong directory. Gonna you answer your question in a second. Uh, and I'm gonna restore from that path again.
this time with uh, no claim. So if we have another look at, uh, it's still here like it was before. Uh, but this time when I stop, flink again. I need to add the job ID for sure. So, and then if we, um, you see that the save point is still here. So that was the, the goal of this iteration um, that, we, um, that we had or, or, uh, to clarify like the semantics. So save points are something which are in control of the user. Flink will never touch it. Uh, and uh, but checkpoints um, that's in the control of Flink and Flink will clean up the stuff once it's done. And so when Flink claims uh, a snapshot uh, that it restores from, then it will also take care of cleaning it up. So uh, there was a question, is there a plan to support uh, incremental canonical save points? Um, Yes and no. So that's something um, yeah, that might be interesting. Um, the reason uh, why that's not in place yet is because uh, when using the RocksDB state backend, a lot of that stuff already comes in, uh, uh, yeah, uh, comes with it. And we, we use that. So um, yeah, having uh, incremental canonical save points that would cause like, um, yeah, more, um, implementation uh, or it would need more resources being invested there and currently that's not the, the, the plan um, yeah but maybe you can raise something on the mailing list or uh, put it into the uh, Flink Jira and uh, maybe if you get some traction there then uh, the community might uh, start working on that Good. Uh, so that was the thing about uh, safe points and checkpoints. Um, so once again, uh, have a look at the documentation um, uh, about uh, yeah, resuming uh, from safe points, especially the restore mode. Uh, we think that for uh, use cases uh, where um, yeah, save points uh, or taking save points became really slow. Uh, we will. We are now offering uh, a lot of uh, benefits um, with this release. And also, um, I know there <laughs> was some documentation before, but um, yeah, we improved it, and we will continue improving that part. Uh, yeah, happy to uh, to get your feedback on that. Good, um, what's next? So we will have a look at Flink uh, SQL. One of the um, highest or most voted features, most asked features we had have been JSON functions. So JSON became uh, important format in the interwebs, uh, as you're probably all aware of. And um, JSON functions, I think they are part of the SQL standard since 2016, uh, maybe longer. Uh, uh, don't, don't blame me if that's wrong. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the community asked a lot of, of questions around that. And we add, added now a couple of them. So there are already a lot of uh, built-in functions. Um, in, in SQL, uh, comparison functions, string functions, temporal functions, uh, value constraint functions, hash functions, uh, aggregation functions, etc. And um, now we also have JSON functions. Um, before I go to start the demo of that, um, I will answer that questions. Uh, the question: Can we store a state in save point and recover during failure? Recover. Um, an incremented flag which need to be loaded with the latest value. Um, I'm I'm not uh, aware of that. Maybe I also need more specifics. Um, so I'm gonna type my email address in here. Maybe you could send me. 
uh, this question as an email and I will follow up on that. Currently, I'm not aware that this is possible, but um, yeah, I'm not the expert of everything. So um, related to Flink. So um, yeah, shoot me an email and I, uh, I will have a look at it and uh, provide an answer via email. Okay, um, so while doing this, I also want to um, promote our SQL client a bit. So that's also something that is uh, shipped with, with Flink uh, as a binary. So when you got a running Flink cluster, you can just uh, run um, bin SQL client that is h and then uh, this client uh, is started and um, yeah so and it, it you can just run any any json uh, uh, query so there has been a couple of improvements for 1.14 and uh, there is now also now a flip around that how to improve the, the flink secret client it's, it's getting more and more traction uh, it's quite handy tool and i can just recommend everyone uh, to give it a try. So um, one of the queries that we can run um, when it comes to, to JSON is, for example, this is JSON. So uh, you can verify on any, um, any expression if uh, it's really a, a JSON. So uh, take some time till it's processed. <laughs> Sorry for that. Um, yeah, so this just returns a, a true um, for sure. Um, can also go a little bit more sophisticated strings like this one. So this will also be true, uh, but you can also um, inspect uh, JSON string. So for example, here we got a simple uh, um, yeah, object. Uh, with a key of A and a value of welcome. And if we insp inspect that uh, using using the uh, this JSON inspection language, we can then um, run this query and we will uh, see the, the welcome. And the good thing is that we, you can also use this with, uh, for sure, with uh, tables. So if, for example, if you are creating your product table, um, with the data gen uh, uh, connector. So it's just generating some blurbs um, and, and filling up the table. Um, so let's see if this works well. Uh, desk product. Uh, Great table, uh, for sure. Um, I have to follow the um, all caps. So yeah, the table was created. And then if we uh, type select star from product, you're once again uh, entering this interactive view uh, that was also intended for, for streaming content. Uh, yeah, we can see the data that is generated. And so now we got the option uh, to, for example, uh, create an uh, array from that. Once again, uh, to enter it in all caps. So now uh, we will create a JSON array based on the name column from this table product. So again, it takes a bit. Uh, so now we got um, one, uh, one row uh, for every row containing an array with only one entry. Uh, if you want to aggregate that, there's also an aggre aggregate uh, function that comes with it. And this is called JSON array ag. And um, yeah, there you can uh, create an. Uh, array containing all the values. Uh, the same thing is also possible for uh, JSON object. Once again, it's called product. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, and here we got a, uh, we'll get in return JSON um, objects with the key name and uh, the value of the name of the product. Good. Um, yeah, so we are looking forward uh, to more traction on the SQL end. Um, it's already one of the interfaces or APIs of, of, of Link that uh, really has been used a lot. And uh, also the SQL client, we are sure that uh, this will improve uh, over the next um, yeah, uh, releases and uh, uh, more handy tools will follow and it will also become more SQL complete with uh, this JSON uh, functions. We did another step in that direction. Um, interesting thing for streaming uh, use cases um, are those uh, window table valued uh, functions that's important for windowing. Uh, so whenever you want to um, put your stream data in time buckets uh, to do some calculations uh, or whatever, uh, then uh, that really comes handy. So uh, that has been working already for um, uh, streaming mode, but now it's also working for batch mode. And also there have been some other um, so not some other good enhancements like this uh, window deduplication, uh, yeah, which removes rows uh, that have been duplicates uh, over sets of columns, and um, yeah, that's that's also something which comes quite handy, and um, uh, I also prepared uh, a little bit of a demo here. Um, so once again, we're using the SQL client, especially for demos, uh, the SQL client is uh, really becoming a good friend. Um, if you want to do that, then um, I can just recommend you give it a, giving it a try. Good, that was not the thing that I wanted to copy over here. So we are creating here a table called a bit. Um, it's containing the, uh, the bit time, which is a timestamp. Uh, it has a price, which is a, a decimal, uh, and the item, a string. We are also adding a watermark uh, for bit time, which uh, will make it the, the time column for this table. And um, yeah, just having like the, the interval of uh, five seconds for this watermark. Once again, we will use the, the um, data gen connector just because it came handy. Uh, if you want to have more control uh, over what is generated over fake data, uh, then you could use the, uh, the Flink Faker. So. Um, query has been executed, uh, table has been created. So when we have a look at this, uh, we see that everything works, uh, worked as it should. Uh, so this is the, the, the road time uh, in this bit time. Uh, we got this watermark thing here, uh, price item, everything as it should be. So now if we are looking uh, at an example, um, For such a uh, for such a, a deduplication, um, and then we can see that here. So it's a rather complicated uh, uh, query. Uh, we are selecting uh, from a subselect. Um, is an, an, an error where I wanted to fix something which did not work. Sorry for that. Um, once again, I have problems with copying over the right stuff. That's the right thing. Um, so we are um, 
um, selecting from a sub, sub select bit time price item window start window end uh, the room number over a partition um, yeah having it by uh, uh, sorted by the bits time because that's our our road time uh, and uh, from the table and here we got a tumbling window um, where we have the, the table bit as uh, first uh, uh, per meter the descriptor bit time and then the interval of 10 minutes and um, it's a bit random if it shows data it depends a bit on the generated data sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't uh, but you will get uh, the thing uh, that it uh, produces so you could see like the, the windows being generated here so let's see maybe a, a something pops up that that's when you should use flink faker uh, because there you have more control over the data that uh, yeah might show up here okay uh, that's about uh, table valued uh, functions so when you have an enhanced uh, streaming use cases have a look at this uh, it's really uh, great stuff and as said there have been a couple of um, enhancements uh, there uh, so a set supporting window table uh, valued functions in batch mode that's part of our uh, unified uh, processor uh, story uh, support streaming window deep uh, deduplicate uh, in the planner and support evaluating in window, uh, window table valued functions in runtime um, yeah those are all uh, great enhancements good what's Next, uh, yeah, uh, connectors or maybe the adaptive uh, batch scale. No, no, let's go to to connectors. Um, uh, oh no, let's go into the elastic scaling uh, first. So. Um, as well as the, the unified uh, processor, um, Flink also wants to go into the direction of elastic scaling, uh, making it a good citizen of all those cloud native initiatives. Uh, and uh, not only providing good experience for, for people who are running uh, uh, jobs on their own, but also uh, providing good experience for people who enable people to run jobs. And uh, Flink has already been offering um, the, the reactive mode. Uh, so have a look at the release note once they're out. Uh, there uh, also have been some improvements around uh, the reactive mode and the adaptive uh, uh, scheduler. Uh, what has been added uh, newly was the adaptive uh, batch scheduler. Um, so this should um, yeah and allow users to don't take care of tuning the parallelism of bad jobs uh, anymore um, so uh, it should automatically be tuned against uh, the data sets uh, that is consumed and um, yeah it should do it essentially automatically for sure um, uh, so what you need to do is uh, you have to configure it um, so at the end it's only uh, uh, some settings uh, you have to provide the adaptive batch scheduler here uh, currently it only works for uh, the batch shuffle mode all exchanges uh, blocking uh, so that's one of the limitations and you also need to uh, set the parallelism of operators to minus one so um, yeah otherwise it would be overridden um, this also for sure applies uh, to uh, the table API and uh, if you would um, call set parallelism either uh, in data stream data set uh, jobs or stream execution environment execution environment then it would also be overridden and um, yeah we recommend to use it with uh, sort shuffle and um, yeah, to set the uh, uh, adaptive batch scheduler max parallelism to the to par parallelism you expect uh, to need in the worst case. Also, some limitations. Um, 
yeah, but it's also now one uh, little gap that the community has been closing uh, towards this uh, native stream processor. Good. And now let's have a look at uh, the whole kin connector uh, ecosystem. So uh, we really want to encourage other tools, the community, uh, people to write connectors. This happened a lot uh, in the past. Um, the community, community already tried uh, a couple of different ways. Not everything worked out uh, as it uh, as it should have. It's also quite a, a delicate uh, thing writing those connectors because you have like diversions or, or flink uh, progressing, but you have also the other tools that uh, the connector is built for. Uh, having new versions, uh, having APIs uh, changing. And so it's a tough thing. And um, what the community did with 1.15, and that's an ongoing effort, not everything is bound to the release. Uh, some things will also now uh, pop up in the next couple of weeks or months. And um, that was like to, to streamline how connectors are developed. So uh, if you look at some of those, especially the ones that uh, have um, the, the, the last changes within the last uh, the month, for example, um, then you could see that uh, now a lot of connectors are basing on this connector base. So when you want to write a connector, uh, have a look at, at uh, this package. So you can already see uh, sync and source uh, that is, um, now based on the uh, on the, the the new interfaces that have been uh, discussed in, in those famous flips, and um, they are also taking care of delivery uh, guarantees. Uh, you have uh, uh, options or uh, best practices on, on how to to write uh, async stuff. Um, so. Uh, that's a that's a proper in, in interface that uh, can be followed. Um, the connector, uh, the Flink connector base is the one thing. And then if you look, for example, at Elasticsearch, so you can see that um, we just uh, released Elasticsearch six and Elasticsearch seven connectors, um, and both are based on the uh, Elasticsearch base uh, connector. So. Um, when we look, for example, at the streaming uh, connector, so here's the sync base. <clears throat> then you can see uh, implementation, how it should be done. And essentially that should act as a, as a role model. Um, the community will work on providing some guidance for that. Uh, we know that connectors are becoming more and more important because um, there's almost no use case where Flink is um, yeah, on, on its own. Um, have a look uh, into that and um, yeah, uh, uh, we hope that the, the quality of those connectors will uh, increase uh, over the next releases. Um, others that have been following this approach already are the AWS one, um, where also AWS base connector is implemented and then Kinesis Firehose and Kinesis streams are built on top of that. And um, yeah, we will move more and more connectors uh, in that direction. Um, also for this, Flink packages will uh, become more important again. Um, yeah, there are some efforts and discussions on the mailing list uh, on how this should be approached and you will see uh, more activity again here. So please have a look uh, also at, at this page. And if you want to contribute something, reach out to the mailing list. Um, I'm sure there will, someone, uh, will be someone who can guide you into all that. Good. Um, then there are two things uh, that I wanted uh, to tease a bit. The one thing is this Flink uh, table store. Uh, that's uh, a new effort which should allow uh, uh, to build dynamic tables for Apache Flink. So that's currently in its own repository. 
Um, there's already quite comprehensive uh, documentation around that, um, how to get started, uh, how to create a dynamic table, how to write data, how to, to uh, query and stream and to streaming queries. Um, yeah, uh, have a look there. Uh, that's a quite interesting thing, uh, which uh, also, also should uh, help bridging uh, the gap to, to data warehouses. Uh, another thing that has been done during 1.15 uh, was uh, the Flink Kubernetes operator. There was also a great effort by the community. Um, yeah, there has been some discussions around that for a longer time. It has been released uh, uh, recently. Um, if you want to go a little bit deeper into that, then uh, I recommend that you have a, a look at the, the webinar um, that was done at the end of March. Uh, so I think starting from Maybe I can copy the video URL uh, with the current timestamp, yes, um, which was presented by uh, Matthias. Um, yeah, it's really great stuff, uh, which once again ties into this cloud native story. Good. Um, what else uh, do we have? So last but not least, uh, having a look at the roadmap. Um, so uh, one essential, uh, the, the roadmap of the up, uh, last updated uh, still says last September, it was just updated uh, two days ago. Um, the, the feature radar uh, shows some movement. So we got now the uh, Kafka file pulls uh, Elasticsearch via the Unified Sync API and Kafka file uh, pulls uh, via the Unified Source API. So those are the things also that I mentioned, um, um, the new interfaces for the connectors. Um, have a look there. Um, yeah, can, the, the AWS connectors are uh, now uh, popping up in, in the beta um, area. The adaptive batch scheduler is, is uh, already production ready and uh, evolving. Uh, but we also got uh, some things phasing out. So all those connectors, they are still based on the old interfaces. And um, yeah, we, uh, over the next couple of uh, releases, uh, they will be uh, deprecated and uh, like it was done with the Kinesis uh, source and sync, the, the file source and sync and the Kafka source and sync. And um, yeah, will also uh, eventually be removed from the, from the Flink repo. What else is popping up? Um, so yeah, still unified analytics, uh, batch and streaming uh, coming together. Um, yeah, we still, uh, the community will continue working on this uh, stream batch processing engine. Uh, so we have a look at Flip 188, uh, dynamic table storage. That was also what I already teased, uh, Flip 190. Um, um yeah that's also something which is uh, uh quite interesting uh a secret client improvement there's another flip 189 uh have a look at this one uh with uh, flip 216 the next uh thing of uh uh that we want to touch is um uh, are the dialects. So there was a discussion around the Hive, uh, Hive connector and uh, following the, the, the sync uh, and source interface overhauls. That's the net, next thing that uh, we want to tackle. Um, yeah. Data stream API, also a lot of stuff to do. Um, still, continuing the effort on FLIP 227 with the, the new source API um, and FLIP 143, which is the, the new interface for the sync uh, API. Um, then we have the, the Kubernetes operator that will continue. Um, buffer debloating. Uh, there's also this, this first beta has been shaped. It has been improved. Um, in 1.15, uh, 
but the effort will continue. So we are also looking for feedback on significant use cases when it comes to buffer debloating. Um, and the heat-based uh, state backend is also something which is was uh, continued for 1.15, did not make it into the release, uh, but hopefully will be um, uh, end up in 1.16. Then we got ongoing work on connectors uh, with uh, uh, Pinot and um, also having as said uh, the whole thing uh, hosted on external repository. Documentation, um, there are also a couple of flips around that. Uh, it's also uh, constantly improved. Um, so you saw some uh, changes around configuration, around the glossary, and um, yeah, the community will also continue working on that. If you want to contribute to that, just reach out to the dev mailing list and um, yeah, um, people will be happy to guide you there. And I guess that's it. Um, so I'm gonna stop sharing now. Well, let's see if I got some slides that we could have a look at together. No, that's it. So uh, that was me. Uh, I already pasted the, my email address in uh, the chat. So if you have a question I was not able to answer or that pops up at a later point, you can also reach out to me. Um, often the, the, the mailing list is the better place uh, to answer questions because the responses are really fast and comprehensive there. And my Twitter handle is Jomo. Ate. And now let's head over to the QA. Uh, notice that queryable state is mentioned under features phasing out in the roadmap. Will there be a replacement uh, for that? There are some uh, discussions around that, uh, but uh, yeah, it's nothing concrete there yet. So we don't. Uh, uh, did not see a lot of uh, traction around that feature. And um, yeah, the, the, the ongoing work on that was rather cumbersome. And um, that's why it was phasing out. Uh, but yeah, uh, when you want to raise a discussion around that, uh, feel free to reach out to the mailing list or uh, post an issue on Flink Jira and um, the community can pick up the discussion again. Any other questions? Good. Yeah, looks like that's it for today. Um, thank you everyone for joining. If you want to rewatch this webinar, please head to viverica.com slash webinars. Um, the next um, 24, 48 hours that um, link will be there to live. You can also view it um, live stream from the YouTube channel as well um, as a way to grab it. So thank you so much for joining and hope to catch you next time. Thanks a lot. See you. See you. Bye.